Hi guys, you are in Ask Teacher J channel and for this video, we are going to learn how to interpret PXY diagrams and also learn the meanings and indications of the regions of the diagram. I hope you learned something. Good luck! So I have here a PXY diagram of a binary mixture containing two refrigerants. Component A is R134A, while component B is R245FA. As you can see, um, the PXY diagram contains two curves, an upper curve and a lower curve. And we are going to identify first the meanings of the areas or regions of the PXY diagram before using it first in actual vapor liquid equilibrium calculations. So let's start first with this area over here. So the shaded area that I did just right now, okay, so if ever it so happened that the overall composition of, let's say, the mole fraction of your R134A in the entire system, as well as its pressure. Um, so basically, the two points lie in the shaded area here in red. So let's say I have 4.5 bars of pressure and I have the overall mole fraction of R134A as 0 0.2. So the intersection lies in this point. So what does that indicate? So it actually indicates that the entire system exists as a liquid phase. Okay, so please remember that one. So I will write it here. Hmm, what color should I use? I'll just use blue. Just light blue. I don't know if L. Not so clear. I'll just use red. Or orange, okay. So in this area, okay, the coordinates of your system pressure and the overall composition of your uh, overall yeah, mole fraction of the entire um, mixture um, hits this area, then the entire system will only have one phase, which is the liquid phase. On the other region of the PXY diagram, so let's say here, so if it so happen that your overall pressure and the overall composition of your um, mixture um, has um, points that hit in this green shaded area, so let's say... Hmm, my overall pressure of the system is 2.5 bars and then the mole fraction of R134A like let, let's say I have 80 moles uh, 80 mole percent R134A so 2.5 bars and 0.8 here since Okay, the intersection of the values creates a point in this area. So that would mean that the entire system would only exist as a vapor phase. So this indicates that... So let's go back to this purple dot over here. So this only means that for a system pressure of 4.5 bars and 0 0.2 or 20 mole percent R134A the entire system is in pure liquid form while at 2.5 bars and 0 0.8 mole fraction or let's say 80 mole percent containing R134A or I'll just call it component A. So I'll just call it component A. So that would mean the combination of those conditions would give you a system that only exists as a vapor phase. So now, 
what if your combination of conditions of P and mole fraction or composition hits within okay in the um hits in the region where um in the region that is enveloped or let's say bordered by the two curves so basically if uh, let's say your total pressure is mm, three bars and then your overall composition is 0 0.5 then it's hitting here right that only means that your entire system will exist not only as a vapor phase not only as a liquid phase but there will be two phases that can be seen in the naked eye this will be a portion of it will comprise of uh, not really a portion of it there will be two phases that will exist and each of the phases will contain both components a and b so a fraction of a will be found in the vapor and a fraction of b will be found in the vapor as well so yeah okay so i will write here vl um vl mixture okay i hope it's clear in the screen so yeah, in this area is the liquid part, this area is the vapor phase, and then this area in between the curves is the vapor liquid mixture. Okay, so I hope it's understood. So I will now delete the scribbles, and I will assign the names of these curves. Okay, so let's just remember that in those areas okay i'm still erasing the lines okay in those areas okay might as well insert some texts can i insert a text here but it's too small just right so let's write again liquid let's write again vapor okay so let's say for a fixed composition of your component a let's say i have 0.5 over here so and then i have 1.5 bar so the entire system is in it's in pure vapor phase no liquid phase can be found now at this fixed composition if i increase the overall pressure from let's say 1.5 to 5 there will be a lot of stages that um, the entire system will undergo so but before I discuss the details I just I would like to create a you know an arrow okay so basically if you pass through this um, arrow so basically from vapor phase you will pass by this area over here which will be a mixture of vapor and liquid and last but not the least at the end all of the vapor phase that can be found initially will become liquid eventually when it reaches five bars okay Ooh. Just the doodles were just erased. So there. Before I give the scenario, okay. I was I was yeah. not able to mention the specific names of the curves. So since um uh in the transition from the vapor phase to the liquid phase, okay, um remember that um at this point you are crossing over a stage wherein the first drop of liquid will be formed right because of course you're approaching the liquid the pure liquid phase so in this area since it's also it's already a mixture of vapor and liquid you will be expecting in this at this point in the curve a first drop of your liquid 
that is formed. Of course, the liquid, the first drop of liquid will contain both components A and B. So, this curve actually is um, what we call a dew point curve. Dew point curve. So, some uh, textbooks call it dew point pressure curve. Or some call it um, dew point curve. Okay. How about for this line over here? Okay, so... If ever the process will be reversed, let's say we have an initial um, condition of the system we're in, let's say we have um, 5 bars and 0 0.1 mole fraction of R134A. So, and then the process will um, uh, undergo lowering of pressure. Okay, so of course it will pass through this region wherein vapor liquid vapor and liquid phases to exist in equilibrium so of course at this point so it since um at this point um it's pure liquid and then at this point it starts to form the first bubble of vapor right because since it's already in vapor liquid territory or area. So, of course, the first um, bubble containing vapor will be um, the first vapor, con uh, the first bubble of vapor formed. So, of course, that bubble of vapor contains components A and B. So, we call that curve as the or we call this blue curve here as the bubble point curve. Bubble point curve. Okay. So the corresponding pressures that will... Um, okay, so focusing on the bubble point curve, the corresponding pressures... Okay. That will give you the first bubble of... Um, vapor as you go down from liquid to the vapor phase they are actually called bubble point pressure okay while the pressures that cause the um, first dew or the first drop of liquid will be called dew point pressure okay so of course there are corresponding pressures at each points in the bubble point curve and the dew point curve okay so those are relevant information as we start um, analyzing a scenario related to the determination of the quantitative amounts of the components a and b that exist in the liquid and vapor phases